Office attic in Surbiton and guess what it's snowing outside I think we need to go for a walk there we go this is the view from my office in the attic in Surbiton it is hammering it down with snow out there yeah definitely time to go for a walk it is snowing in Surbiton and everybody is so excited <laughs> It's a rare occurrence. We don't get a lot of snow. <laughs> so, very excited. <laughs> I can see a dog. People always take their dogs out to enjoy the snow. And these dogs get very concerned about sledging. <laughs> you see your neighbours far more <laughs> when it's snowing. <laughs> Dedicated helper is with me. He's got his tongue out trying to catch snowflakes. There's plenty of them, that's for sure. <laughs> Last snow we had really was 2018, the beast from the east. And we didn't get that much from the beast from the east. What young dedicated helper here remembers is the 2009 and 2010, uh, 2010 massive snowfalls. And I think he thought that all years would snow that way, but no, not much since then. If it's snowing around here for quite a while, it'll be fair, for quite a lot of years. On <laughs> I know. It all stopped. And, and, yeah, it just all stopped, didn't it? Yeah. <sighs> right, I'm going to put the Osmo Pocket away in a sec because it's getting a bit covered in snow and it is not waterproof. So I will see you at the park. See you there. Right, here we are. This is. Ewell Road, the main road from Tolworth to Surbiton. There is, of course, is a jogger <laughs> and another one over there. So as you can see, the road is pretty covered actually. The M25 isn't far from here and the A3. I wonder what their snow is like. My brother-in-law's had to go into work to clear the snow. This is a groundsman where he works. So here we are, January 2021, lashing it down with snow. Fabulous. Pretty tough drive for a lot of the cars. There's a bus, the 281 bus. 281, yeah, there it goes in the distance. And we are going into the park. Let's see you in there. Here we are, Fish Ponds, Fish Ponds Park. And look, everybody's here. Let's put it down slightly. There we go. Massive excitement. Dedicated helper, aka my son. Massive snow lover with me. We are together. Let me just see if I can turn the camera and get a shot of us both. Here we go. Very, very, very covered in snow. <laughs> Let's go for a bit of a walk. Oh, icy underfoot. Very icy. We've had a really hard frost overnight. Slightly. Really hard frost overnight and I woke up to white everywhere and we've had so much rain recently that it's frozen here in the park so the snow has fallen on top of frozen over uh, puddles and swamp. Okay, I'm with the Osmo Pocket, which means I can't keep it on all the time because it's going to get soaked. I do actually have a GoPro, but I haven't set it up yet. Next time, huh? Right, I'll stop filming for a while and bring you back later. See ya. Wow, you can't even see the, barely see the church in the distance over there. It's coming down so heavily. Dedicated helper here is trying to find his gloves. 
He's very confused that he threw snowballs at me and then got wet cold hands. Let's go see the pond, shall we? <laughs> no, not quite cold enough for the pond to freeze. Very true, wise advice. Not too close to the edge. Our previous doggy, who was also a French bulldog, leapt into this pond one summer's day. We thought French bulldogs can't swim because their heads are too heavy. No, he swam straight back out of it. Came back absolutely covered in algae. Anyway, here's the pond. Still a lot of green on top, actually. Can't see any ducks. I'm hoping you can see this and that the lens isn't all snow covered. There we go, duckies. They must be a bit cold. Another cold doggy. Oh, his legs are freezing. <laughs> Here is basically the entire local population heading out to enjoy this rare event. No history lessons today, just enjoy the snow. Do see my other videos if you want a bit of history. Okay, I'm going to put the Osmo pocket away now because it's getting wet and snowy again. Bring you back shortly. We kind of call this like Canada Corner because we imagine if we were in Canada or something. This might be where we can believe that we are when it gets like this. I guess you Canadians are just laughing. It's like, call that snow? That's not snow. Oops, caught my head on a branch. <laughs> Can you hear that crunchy sound? Snow beneath our feet. There we go, some serious snowmen being made there. And some serious snowballs being thrown at me by, me by dedicated helper. Now we are very close to an excellent sledging spot. There are two very good sledging spots at these two parks. This one's sort of a tarmac hill, but it's pretty good for sledging. And it's not too far either. As you can hear. <laughs> oh, yep, argument's breaking out now. And there is the rest of the park. And here is said tarmac hill. We've done a fair bit of sledging down here in the past. There's actually a house here. It's got a sign on the front that says beware of cattle. I've never seen any cows here. Chasey doggies, three doggies chasing around in the snow. Bless them. Freezing paws. Oh, 
slidey slidey. So this is one of the exits. Is it Brown's Road it goes to over there? The lad here, that used to be his nursery over there. Tilt this slightly, there we go. There's a dog down there. <laughs> Hello, what are you doing? I don't think you're supposed to be here. Okay, you're okay. Oh, is that dog supposed to leave the park? Did that appear to be an owner? We better see. This way, baby, this way. Okay, we better take you back down. Go back down, sweetheart. <sighs> Shall we take the dog back down? Why don't you come this way? No, they know where to go. They know where to go. Oh, bless, you've got lost. Okay, all sorted. Dog and owners reunited. They were looking for their dog. Unfortunately, the dog ran out of the park. But back and safe and sound now. Still crunching away underfoot. Still snowing. Flakes have got a little bit smaller. Been snowing for about an hour or so now. And here we have a view from on high. There goes a parakeet. We were just down there. I couldn't work out why a guy was hanging out in the bushes. Turns out they were playing hide and seek. <laughs> Very excited. That was a dog again. <laughs> With its owners this time. Okay, I'm going to put the Osmo pocket away again because it's getting soaked again. See you at the next stage, wherever that might be. And we are in a tree tunnel. How very exciting. Snowy tree tunnel. Might as well be in Lapland, seeing Santa. Now for those Surbiton experts, you will know that we have another park just over there with a little tump where people go um, sledging. We're not going that way, we're actually going to go to Southborough and do a pavement walk around there. Little kid on the sledge, his first snow experience. I wonder who gets more excited, the parents or the children. So Dedicated Helper has just reminded me that his friend calls this type of weather the insulting weather. Why does he call it insulting? Because we rarely get it in this part of England. <laughs> exactly. Because it's just an insult when we see beautiful snowy pictures from all around the world. And we just get rain. And here we are back at the duck ponds. So we are going to do a pavement walk now up towards Southborough where you last saw 
my summer walk. <laughs> Far from summer -y now. It has got a lot busier since we arrived, hasn't it? I don't blame everyone. Get out, enjoy. Somebody seems to have a Costa coffee there. Where did he get that from? Me, please. Teeny tiny snowman here. There we go. Teeny snowman. That's Ewell Road over there. We're just heading there before we go to Southborough. Wow, somebody's making an enormous snowman over there. So you can see we have just about visible church spire up there. The roads are now getting nice and covered. Well, not necessarily nice. There's a police car. I imagine they're having quite a busy day today. Yeah, people trying to get through the sludge. Oh, and a railway replacement service. So it looks like the trains are not on today. Sound at Surbiton Station. <laughs> people get really excited this day. There's the pub. Gonna get a takeaway from there next week. Halloumi Burger. Here's the local co-op, battling away. It's up and running, where I got a few trainers from. And we are heading along here, up to Southborough, to see what Southborough looks like in the snow. We're not sure we've ever seen Southborough in the snow, so it's quite exciting. not to promote my own videos, but do check it out if you want a bit of history in this area from my summer walk. There's some poor guy, poor guy doing deliveries. Oh, somebody has made such a cute little snowman. For those used to snowy places, no, we do not do winter tyres because there's simply no point in this country. Well, certainly not in this part of the southeast. What do you think, doggy? You got an opinion, have you? Fair enough. <laughs> So we are at the old turnpike here, junction of Ditton Road, Upper Brighton Road. And oh dear, that poor soul's really struggling with driving. And that's over there, just past where that car is um, struggling, is where Thomas Hardy used to live. And thank you so much to the local journalist who did all the research into Thomas Hardy in this area. He's going to send me his book and I'll do a walk based on it. So we've got the A3 in Chessington over there. We just look towards Surbiton. And we are about to head into Southborough, a place we have been wanting to visit in the snow for ever. Finally get our chance.
as expected, Southra looks well snowy. But it's a bit quieter. Parakeets surrounding us at all times. Go parakeets. Another house being updated. I've been walking in this area for 25 years. I think I've seen nearly every house be refurbished, rebuilt. Everything. Snow's lightening up now and getting a bit smaller flakes, a bit wetter. I probably have to pop the Osmo Pocket away again in a sec. Somebody's attempted a snowman. Yep, the skies are brightening up. Not sure how long it's been snowing. I guess about an hour and a half, something like that. I was hoping we might be in a favourable spot for the pivot and get some more. I'm not sure we will. My pocket's getting a little bit wet, so I'm going to put it away. Return shortly. Langley Avenue. Named after the Langley family. That's down to Ashcombe Avenue there. So this is the main biggie road through Southborough. The Langley family. As I mentioned in my summer walk here, the Coots, Coots Bank had a lot to do with rebuilding in this area. After the original visionary, was it Mr Pooley, went bankrupt. And this used to be a distant area from Kingston and Hampton Court, but where you had fantastic views across the local countryside. Actually, not even local, quite a distance you could see across the counties. As I said, Ashcombe Avenue. <laughs> the time when we feel the need to abuse each other's, each other throwing balls of ice at each other. <laughs> Why do we feel that need? I recall from my history tour I gave you last time. I believe John Nash built the original Southborough house just over here, which is currently being refurbished. I could be wrong on that, by the way. Once I've done my history tours, I tend to forget it pretty fast. As you can see, the snow's really reduced now teeny little flakes. We're still waiting, I think lots of people are still waiting for their Christmas trees to get picked up. I assume there's a Christmas tree pickup service this year. There's an awful lot of Christmas trees on pavements at the moment. They're very seasonal but they get covered in snow. Well, I'm glad we came out when we did really caught the snow at its heaviest. Oh, another Christmas tree, looking seasonal. We've had our use out of you, now we just leave you on a pavement to freeze. Southborough Close, which had just redone the pavements along there over the summer. There we go, looking good. Looking very nice actually. I 
think we've sort of got this, these few are sort of the old lodge and stables type buildings, if I recall correctly. Southborough Lodge, there you go. And that's the coach house there. It's the, the original coach house. There's quite a few houses in this area calling themselves the coach house. There's the lodge. And then I can see somebody's videoing here. The original Southborough house. As I said, I think John Nash designed. Don't hold it against me if I got that wrong. There you are, Southborough House. I think last time we were here, you couldn't see it at all. It was covered in fencing, massive trees to the front. Now they've done a pretty good job of it. Now, a young dedicated helper with me is actually a Special Olympics athlete. And we come training here up and down this hill, trying to get his speed up in adverse conditions, don't we, babes? Yes. Yes, indeed. You can always tell he's out of training because he gets really out of breath and really slows down. <laughs> you know, I haven't tried uh, doing a training session in the snow. In the snow, is that safe? I don't I'm think not it's sure. <laughs> Could be argued both ways. <laughs> and the views from up here, just while I tuck, tuck, get into the old conversation, uh, before all the trees were here, you had most incredible views in the distance from up here. People with their sledges. If the snow sticks around, I guess we might come out with a sledge later, might we? Yeah, we just might. Sounds quite nice, doesn't it? Been a bit. Been a bit. We've, we always spy out local areas that might be good for sledging, so we know the places that get really busy. So we find somewhere else. Got a few options on the table. We used to go sledging a lot at the park. A lot, yes. Well, we might go there. Yeah, we just might. Might do. Even this would be a pretty good sledging spot. Oh, this is a good sledging spot. As long as there aren't cars, but yeah, wrong. there aren't that many cars. This guy's giving it a go. Yeah. It's called a BMW X3. I don't know if it's a four x four. That is advantage. Cars are slowed down during the snow. Yeah. Absolutely, less of them. Oop, I even went slipping sliding there. Okay, I'm going to finish this walk now. So I do hope you enjoyed a lovely snowy walk around Surbiton much to our delight and surprise and excitement and i will see you next time bye bye <laughs>